we're going to take a look at the Kaiser land. Now I know that you guys, uh, depending on how things work out, it might be kind of rapid fire that you saw the first impressions and then this, but that's because there was so much content that got shuffled and moved because of blade shift stuff. So without any further ado, let's get into this incredibly frustrating review. But first, you guys know what time it is. Turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music and this one's depressing. <laughs> talking about this this is dash cam time uh, it's a channel i watch because apparently i don't get enough frustration on the california roads i have to watch other people have road rage and accidents so i'm just putting off the inevitable this is the kaiser vanguard lan now this is an ozo ray knife design ozo and ray knife design and ev the, there's nothing wrong with the knife itself but this is another one of those frustrating ones for me because this knife has a showstopper about it. Even though how great it is, I could not buy this knife. And I wish knife companies would get around this. So we're not going to talk about that too much. You guys can probably have a good idea what it is. So let's not waste any time and let's get down to the counter and take a look at it from above. And I can show you why it's so frustrating. All right, guys. Let me start this off before we even get into the specs and tell you I love the knife. I love this knife. I like the handles. I like the blade. Love the blade shape. I like the way it cuts. But this knife, unfortunately, has a fatal flaw that I could never purchase this knife until they correct the issue with this. So, but let's get into some specs and everything first. So what are we looking at? We are looking at... Oh, this is... God, this is a beautiful knife. Um, you're looking at the Kaiser Land, the K Kaiser Vanguard Land, and it is... What we're looking at is a 3.5-inch clip point tanto that's done... A Jap almost a Japanese style Tonto. You have this nice hollow, uh, a lot of places call it a Sponto. Nice, attractive, really good blade. You got some reinforcement at the tip and a nice hollow back here that's nice and thin. Um, so this thing is done in N690 with a blade stock thickness of 0 0.12. Let's go ahead. I got the calipers out. Um, I have to put the, got the calipers out and zeroed. Let's go ahead. I say 0 0.12. So you're looking at 0 0.12. Real close on that, 0.1175. Uh, you know, in finishing, those those thicknesses are an estimate. So behind the edge back here, looking right at, it's not, there we go. Um, we're looking at 0 0.023. So not super thin, but it still cuts well behind the edge at the front where it's a little bit thicker. Let me get up here. Um, 0 0.0255. So not a super thin knife but also not like crazy thick. Um, so handle on this is, uh, handle length on this is 4.5 inches. Uh, and it's in textured by Carter with a stainless steel liner lock on bearings. So overall on this, basically, I mean, let's look at it here. I didn't get an overall length. You're looking just at, right at eight inches on my mat here. So, and then if for weight, they have 3.31 ounces listed. As we know, mine doesn't do it that way. Mine does it in fractions. So let's look at it in ounces, three and a half. Um, let's look at it in grams for those that you don't do freedom units. You can tell by my voice, I'm not enthused about doing this review because I hate how upset I am about a certain thing. So 98 grams, not a real heavy knife. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way. Give me a second and I'll be right, right back. We're gonna go ahead I'm going to tell you about all the things I love about it. First of all, this knife is beautiful. The handles on it, not only are they attractive, typically I'm not a, a fan of this checkered grenade pattern, but on this, it, it gives it, it works. It gives it a good look. The construction is really, really good. You're looking at, like I said, it's a steel liner lock, uh, runs on bearings. Action on this is super good. The Kaiser action these days, some of these knives that are coming from Kaiser, just amazing. Um, all the hardware is fairly recessed down in. You don't have any real hot spots on the handles themselves. Uh, blade, the blade on this, 
nice robust blade clip point spanto with the combination hollow and flat uh done by as you can see it is it's an ozo and ray design nice looking logo on it done in n690 steel i don't dislike n690 steel i said got the fuller here so everything about this knife super attractive it cuts well it's pretty functional it's the action on it's amazing but then you get into the one thing about it that i can't stand like i honestly can't stand it uh kaiser went ahead and they did this adjustable clip where you have three different positions so you can move it forward and back but the problem is that that's the pocket clip now a lot of people are oh well you just don't like deep carry pocket clips not true in comparison deep carry pocket clip i love this super comfortable i can carry it forward not a hot spot but do you see the main difference here, let's take a look at this. This is a knife that I have not done the forward first uh, first impressions on yet, but I have had it in my hand. And I'm going to tell you, I don't dislike the pocket clip on this uh, this Vivi Keen Natter. Uh, nice pocket clip. Other pocket clips. This one, fairly tall pocket clip. Not a deep carry, but fairly tall. Doesn't bother me at all. Do you see the mass difference? The big difference is this is a knock at your door and say, hey, neighbor, come in. You want to talk? This is the video of Earth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop, a, I'm gonna drop, a, I'm gonna drop one in here. I don't do it very often. This is a fucking piece of shit pocket clip. So this is like your friends coming over and hanging out for a little bit. This is a home invasion. There is no transition on this. It's like having. And this is the worst pocket clip I've handled in a very long time. I mean, even Benchmade's pocket clips that are this bad are not as uncomfortable as this. They're close. Don't get me wrong. They're close. I'm not a big fan of that pocket clip, but where it sits in this knife, not a problem. The fact that these companies will go to the trouble of making these beautiful designs for, and then be like, eh, screw it, just throw a pocket clip on. Seriously, horrible pocket clip. I could not buy this knife. I would never carry it. I would never carry this knife, which upsets me because this is a relatively good knife. I really like this knife. It's so attractive. It's got a blade shape that I like. The handles aren't bad. I care. I took the pocket clip off this and carried it without a pocket clip. So the thing that irritates me is to carry this knife, I basically would have to modify how I carry it for me for it to be a knife for me. I would have to take the pocket clip off, which means that I would have to use a slip. Because if you put this down in your pocket regular, it's just going to move around and fall over. The slip gives it a little bit of width and keeps it from sliding sideways. Instead of sitting like this, then it drops like this. Could not carry this. One item on this knife has ruined this knife for me, and it really upsets me because I like this knife. So let's do a couple size comparisons for those of you guys that don't care about the pocket clip. We'll go ahead and look here. Here is that Kaiser Grazioso. Um, not, not a big difference in, in size. Um... But for knives that you guys probably do know well, this is about just almost one for one, the same size as my Benchmade uh, 940. And another knife that everybody should be relatively aware of the size of, the um, Sabenza 21. So just about the same size. If you know the size of those knives, you're looking at about the same. But yep, not a knife I would put in my collection. I would hazard... I guess that there's a lot of people that feel the same as me about how that pocket clip feels. I, I hate it. I hate the fact that this knife is so enjoyable to look at and use without the pocket clip. Now, could I get an aftermarket pocket clip? Possibly, but why should I have to? If companies would take a look at, you can do a deep carry pocket clip. They've already done it. This is another Kaiser. This is a deep carry pocket clip that is not uncomfortable. Why? Why, why, why? Why do you guys continue to do this? This makes me want to break things. So there you go, guys. Beautiful knife. Completely ruined. Given a fatal flaw. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts, and I'll try to find something cheerful. Like I said, guys, pocket clip on this is just... I'm kind of break my rules. It's a piece of shit. This is possibly one of the worst feeling pocket clips in hand I've handled in a long time. And I wish knife companies would get around the fact that they, they design these great, great knives and then they put a pocket clip on it that for a lot of people, the comfort level on this would be a showstopper. It is for me because for me, a knife is a tool. And people are like, oh, I show what I do. Just like, I use my knife probably as much as any other tool in my house. It's probably the most used tool I have. 
and to have something get added to it uh, that just detracts from that and makes it like, I wouldn't use this. Like I wouldn't use this. I don't like anything about that pocket clip. It hurts my hand. The only way I would carry it is if I took the pocket clip off and then put it in a pocket slip, which kind of defeats the purpose. So yeah, guys, it, it's just really, it's really disappointing to have something that is that aesthetically pleasing, that well-designed. And like I say in the, in the tabletop, I took the pocket clip off and it's great. Um, I would have to left hand carry this. I would have to completely change the way I carry this knife to, to account for the discomfort that is caused by one of the, like just a thoughtless thing. Oh, okay, we'll design a knife, but then let's just, we'll just use this. Like, that's like, that's like buying, that's like buying a supercar, like a sports car, like a Lamborghini and then getting it home and, and painting it with a brush and a roller. So I could go on about how much I hate some pocket clips and especially on this, which is such an exquisite knife, but I'm not going to. So guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why I can't change the content if I don't know what you don't like. Um, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as what I do with like uh, Dash Time. Today, I share the channel with others. You guys can share that channel with people you think might enjoy it. Uh, but if you want to support the channel financially, there are multiple ways. There are There's a join link down below that gets you in on exclusive content exclusive giveaways, early access to videos, uh, and I do certain things uh, with the paying members that I don't do with just the general subscribers. Um, there's other ways to do it as well. I have an Ember Shirt Co. link down below where you can get in and get some of my merch. Either Ember Shirt Co. or my merch store, there's links below for both of them. They're on the same site. So the coupon code that I have will work on all of them, and I set up a coupon code for you guys. It's Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word. And the final way is I have affiliate links. There's affiliate links that'll take you to, to Amazon to get all kinds of stuff that I have listed below, knives, stuff like that. And if you don't see what you're looking for, but you continue shopping, I still get credit for anything you purchase after you use my affiliate link. So that's it, guys. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. It makes it easier to moderate the channel for me and Nico because he's my channel manager. Um, like I said, keep it clean in comments. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I'll see you guys in the next video.